I'd just like to open the meeting today and welcome everyone here. I don't think there's any apologies. Um, welcome David on the screen, is he? He's not, not connected, so he'll, he'll come in when he comes in. Um, we have quite a full agenda, quite a big paper from the property group. It's good training, is it? And um, we'll just we'll get into it. Um, I don't think we need to do anything. It's basically get straight into the first item, and it's the um, executive summary on the development contributions, issues, and options paper. And it's quite a lengthy bit of paper. And um, Katrina would like to. Would you like to speak to that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So I'm Katrina Ellis from the Property Group Planning Consultant for Gordonshire Council. Um, so it is. A lengthy paper and I take it as read, though we're happy to take questions. But just to summarise, it's come about on the back of the work of the proposed district plan and having to make a decision about whether there'll be financial contributions in the proposed district plan or not. And also we're looking to upzone certain areas and as part of that need to kind of have a bit of a idea about what infrastructure might need to be upgraded um, and how that will be funded in order to be able to unlock the potential of that development, um, unlock the opportunities there. So we've already tabled the issues and options paper with the district plan subcommittee, but um, understand it has to come to this committee to be decided upon if we take the development, con if we go away and develop a development contributions policy. So as per the issues and options paper, um, we've landed on developing a development contributions policy as a preferred option for ensuring that there is opportunity to collect money to help fund infrastructure going forward and development contributions policies. Um, there's uh, a bit less risk with it than financial contributions because financial contributions are in the RMA and there's RMA reforms at the moment and they're also a bit more specific. Um, so yeah, at this stage we're just looking for approval, seeking to see if you're willing to approve for us to formulate that policy and at a later date kind of issues and options and uh, the dollar cost of contributions and who may have to pay or come back to council or committee for consideration of, you know, the detail of the policy itself. Has uh, anyone got questions of Katrina? There's quite, I think I've got some, but I open up the floor for us, Joe. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you, the um, developer contributions, um, what are we currently using? Because I have heard some businesses are talking about um, developer contributions, but is it not currently under a policy, or how's it been working to date? Um, yep, so there's a few things there. So in terms of an actual policy, there is currently a development contributions policy, however, it's limited to commercial and industrial developments with a value of half a million dollars or above. So the council is collecting development contributions at the moment, but for a very limited number of developments and not for residential development at the moment. But the other way councils um, 
funding infrastructure upgrades at the moment is if somebody wants to do a resource consent and that requires, for example, a road to be upgraded, it's on that one developer to fund and do all the works. And what we've seen is some consents just haven't eventuated because Pete, that makes it not financially viable for someone to proceed. Paul, uh, Councillor McPhail. Uh, through the Chair. Um, just one question I've got. The, the thing that we, we're doing some case by case at the moment, so some aren't getting charged as much as others, is that correct? But I've just heard in one or two discussions that, that concerns me because I'm just not sure whether we were how, how we work that out. Yeah, so there is um, a policy at the moment for those commercial and industrial developments, and that's got a specific calculation and formula at the moment, which spits out a dollar value. Um, so if somebody wants to contest that, I think they can, um, but it, there is a clear formula as to what that contribution should be. So, sorry, f f follow on from that. So yeah. that we have discretion as a council for that, is it? Because I understand there's a couple of ones we've done that haven't been done on the same scale, and I'm just wondering why that was or whether, that's, whether this takes care of that in the mm. future. I'm not sure the answer to that question. No, it's okay. Thanks. Just to comment, I think in the past uh, people have appealed for, this, appealed for um, comp uh, a lesser money amount, and um, I, I know of two that's probably happened. And, um, but what, what's actually happened is inflation's moved that the 500,000 level is, is going to capture a lot more from now going forward. Yeah. Keith. A apologies Justin. for lateness. Um, the, um, as, as set out in the report, a number of the financial contributions have been in abeyance since 2016. But the one that is still there is the development contribution and the process that is there um, enabled people to object to that. And staff have a, a delegation to a certain extent. But if it can't be resolved, then it, it's required to be considered by council. Um, so the, the formula that's there sets out the maximum amount. But for the large scale developments, there's always a bit of wriggle room in terms of the amount paid and the, and the way that it's spent. Um, I guess that it leads on to the, the question in terms of um, uh, there, there is reference in the report to the development um, agreement. Is that something that the council has the ability to do now? And I've got another question after. Through you, Mr Chair. Yes, that is something the council have ability to do. However, there might be limited incentive for developers, where if you had a development contribution policy, for example, then you had a development agreement as an alternative option, people might see it as favourable to get a developer agreement, um, whereas at the moment a developer agreement um, would require firstly the developer to um, want to stump up some money <laughs> and secondly if they're not covering the full cost counts would still need a way of funding the rest of the cost to upgrade infrastructure so there's just a bit of a gap there at the moment which means there's been limited merit in developer agreements so what what is set out in the report um, is, is that uh, a policy be considered as part of the long-term plan and i'm just thinking from a practical point of view that it's not really related to the long-term plan, nitty-gritty numbers stuff. Um, I'm just wondering, Jason, how do you see it going forward? I was thinking that it's probably something uh, that can be developed with the um, Policy and Regulatory Committee coming up with the policy and, and um, then bring it back into the long-term plan process. Um, through the Chair, yeah, absolutely, I, I would agree with that. Um, I think from the conversation already around the room, you can see why there is a need for the policy because we do have a fair bit of ad hoc um, sort of development at the moment, a number of ways that you can capture um, some contribution from developers, but then certainly it highlights the, um, I guess, the level of 
uh, potential unfairness around that because we're not operating under consistent policy. Um, but I would certainly um, see that putting it through um, and aligning it with the LTP is common practice, um, and certainly um, then you're able to link it to uh, the proposed program of works that's scheduled over that uh, 10 to 30 year period. Um, and so it gives you a, a basis for setting um, your policies around the amount of development that you anticipate and also the capital works program that you are looking to um, uh, uh, set over that, that time period. Thank you for that answer. Does that mean, then mean that there is an addition required to the recommendation on page four? Yes, I think we have to change that because it's in conjunction with the long-term plan. Um, the what do you think, Jason? Sorry, through you, Mr Chair, the um, let policy legally has to be done in conjunction with the long-term plan. Yes, but in the first instance, sorry. Um, so my, my expectation, I'm not a member of the committee, so I can't move it. Um, so my expectation is that the council commence the development of a development contribution policy um, through the policy and regulatory right. committee for later conclusion inclusion as part of the long-term plan process. Would someone like to move that from the floor? <laughs> Stuart, would you like to move that? Thank you, Councillor McDan. Is there a seconder? Will this read back to Susan, <laughs> <laughs> Susan will read it back to us, I think. <laughs> Councillor Stringer, any more discussion? No discussion, although I'll put that motion that we, um, would you like to repeat that, Susan? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All those, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? It's carried. Turn to uh, page 35, and um, we have the monthly compliance update for Terramita, um, Marawa, for Gore and Matera from Aaron. Um, thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll take this report as read and happy to take any questions. Councillor McFarl. Well, you had a lot of dumb questions. Um, the the report there where the environment, um, where we didn't get a discharge consent, what, what happened there? Well, why did, what, what's the environment at Southland doing? They seemed to, we sent ours down there and then it came back and went back and they said it was all right, is it? Yeah, so that one is, uh, I think, on the stormwater discharge paper, which is still to come. Oh, it's going to be done, sorry. <laughs> Just remember that for later. No, no further questions. Um, I'll put the report be re that the report be received. No, sorry, Neville, the councillor. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I've just got one question about the turbidity meters in the tower. I presume with the upgrades, things will change there. I know it's going to be pretty hard to treat that water when it changes so quickly from the polar dam. 
uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, those stability meters are being upgraded as part of the upgrade. Um, we're finding they're really good and reliable throughout all our plants. So. So that upgrade will be finished in July, is it? August. Uh, through the chair, I, I think it's uh, later in the year, probably around October. Yep. No further comments on the um, Patera and Gore one compliance. Um, I'll put that the report be received. Would someone like to move that? Stuart? And Ben. Yep. All those in our favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? It's carried. Page, um, page 38, is it? 39. 39. Gore Urban Water Supply, the Cooper's Well Consent Annual Report for 2022 and 2023. Um, and there's a copy of the uh, annual report for the Gore Water Supply. Um, Matt, is that you? Yeah. Yeah, Aaron, sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is um, a condition on our water take consent for the Cooper's Well um, and the report. I'll take the report as written and happy to take any questions. Councillor Stringer. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. A couple of questions to get there. Um, so, looking at the report, why are we not using Cooper's one and two wells? I see there's no, um, no total volume metrics um, recorded there. Uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, when we're needing to actually take water from wells one and two, they're already dry, um, so they're, they're not quite as deep um, and seem to mess up the aquifer a bit, so, yeah. So, Aaron, we did get close to taking from the terror, didn't we, but not quite, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the day we sent out notification for the Jacobstown um, that we're going to start pumping, uh, the heavens opened and f started filling things back up again. So uh, this year we, we were quite lucky and didn't need to. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. No further, Joe. Mr. Councillor Stringer. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, when were the wells um, last cleaned? Um, so, the older wells at Coopers, um, they're not bores, so the wells haven't actually been, um, I've never heard of cleaning a well before, but the bores, um, they were, Jacobstown was redeveloped in 2020, um, and Coopers is um, quite new, so... No further questions. We move on at the report we received. Uh, Neville and Joe, thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. This one, um, page 43, the Jacobstown Emergency Water Supply Take and Discharge Permit Consent for 2022 and 2023 Annual Report. Um, that'll be Aaron again. Yeah. Uh, thank you again, Mr Chair. Um, this report is, again, another condition of um, having the emergency water supply take from the Matara River. Um, as you can see in the report, there was no obstruction taken. Um, so, yeah, it was a pretty straightforward forward report. Happy to take any questions. No questions. I'll put the uh, report be received. I'd move it for that, thanks. 
Stewart. Seconder, Councillor Stringer. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, it's carried. We're over to the um, Three Waters quarterly levels of service report. Um, Aaron again. Uh, thanks again. Um, so with this report, uh, we've actually made a, a couple of changes to it. It's um, a year-to-date report now um, compared to the full year, the year previous. Um, that way we can do a bit more um, viewing of how we're sort of trending. Um, and it's a lot more time, a uh, lot less time consuming doing it this way. Um, happy to take any questions. No questions. I'll put that, I'll put the report, someone like to move that the report be received. Stuart and Ben, thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, it's carried. Page 48. Page 48, stormwater discharge consent for numbers uh, 206303 and 206304 and 206305, compliance sampling. Uh, Aaron. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as part of our stormwater consents, um, we're required to um, take annual sampling, um, and on that we were deemed to be um, non-compliant, um, and I felt that was quite harsh, so I asked for um, them to reassess us. Uh, upon their reassessment, um, they deemed that they had been a bit harsh and uh, awarded us compliant on that consent. Um, happy to take any questions. Sorry, Councilor. since you've already had that. Yeah, Councillor McVeigh. Um, what's the cost to us for that? You know, it's our time and um, all that sort of stuff. Um, through you, Mr Chair, um, the costing I haven't looked at, um, but it is a requirement for our um, stormwater discharge consents that we undergo this stormwater monitoring. So, sorry, through the Chair. So having to do it twice... That, or did you just ask for a review on that? Okay, thank you. No, cool. Councillor Stringer. Uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, why are they not doing human E. coli testing? They're just doing a generic... I think I could answer that one, but Aaron can answer it. <laughs> um, so there's a lot more cost involved in, in doing the, the trace analysis. Um, so for our consent requirements, we have to do E. coli and then... If we're over a thousand, a result over a thousand, then we have to do an investigation. Um, in that investigation, that we then go into tracing and to see if it's human or or not. So that's where we, because of the large cost outlay. Thanks, Aaron. Um, Councillor Stringer. Yeah. Further to that, um, how many times have we? been over previously and would it be worthwhile instead of going through the investigation and then doing the human collar test just doing it from the start to save you the, the hassle? Is that our responsibility or is that entirely itself on? Uh, through you Mr Chair that would be uh, our responsibility um, and there are times where a trace sample can't be taken um, and it needs to be it need, the re result to get a decent um, trace needs to be well over a thousand. So if we said to the lab we want to do trace on all our samples, then we would be paying for a lot that can't be traced. So um, and we're we're just ticking off that extra condition that they've put on for doing the investigations. Yep. It was interesting a comment. I was take, I record the rain gauge figures for the year. And we had 137 millimetres of rain in March, and um, prior to that, it was very dry. Yeah. Would someone like to move that? Any more questions, first of all? Um, Councillor Neville Phillips. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, no, just a uh, query then. So you're a bit concerned about the discharge for three and four in Matera. 
and number 10 and Gore. Perhaps that um, maybe if we were enlightened about where those discharges were, it would probably give us a better idea about whether it's on land base or you know, straight out of the pump stations or whatever it might be. So it might give the, the council a better idea about where it's, whereabouts it is. Uh, through you, Mr Chair, um, those sample sites, are j that's just their name, so we know exactly where they are and, and what they're sort of leading from or to. Um, so next time I'm, I'm happy to share that with you if you like. Yep. Thank you. Any further questions? Would someone like to move that the report be received? Someone else's turn, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Councillor McVale. Is there a seconder? Councillor Phillips. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? It's carried. Page 58. Oh, no, the one before that, 57. Leak report. 56. Page 56. The stormwater discharge consent for, for numbers 206303, 206304, and 206305 E. coli exceedance investigations, three monthly re update. Um, Aaron again. Uh, through you, Mr Chair, um, this is a requirement on the stormwater discharge consents that if we um, go over a thousand, a result over a thousand, then we need to carry out an uh, investigation and provide three monthly updates until those investigations are closed. Um, happy to take any questions. Councillor McPhail. Uh, through the chair, um, just the Pokerel situation there. Um, how do you get any information from there with septic tanks and things like that? Because I know I've, I've had a property out there and it has been a bit of an issue, low water table or the high water table, I should say. Um, the how is that going? How are you going to improve that? That's or how do we improve it? Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so Pokerel is. is very um, challenging in trying to find these. Um, to date, we have found two failed septic tanks, um, and that is through a smoke machine that we purchased last year for smoking the, the lines. Um, but yeah, it is it is quite a challenge to um, fix that out at Pukarau. Sorry for the question. So is, in the future, how do we move through on that? Because obviously those septic tanks are going to be uh, getting older. Uh, but there was talk of going the full surge there one stage, but I don't know what... But in the meantime, you just got to work with what you've got, I suppose. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, through you, Mr Chair. Um, there is uh, the possibility of, of doing treatment and bringing it back to Gore, but there is a large capital outlay in, in doing that, so... Thank you. Um, any more questions? Would someone like to uh, move that the report be received? Thanks. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Bell. Bell. Uh, seconder for that, thanks. Mc Councillor McPhail. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, it's carried. Um, the Matera Elite Detection Report. Um, Aaron again. Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I like you, uh, the report as read and happy to take any questions. Councillor Stringer. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, have the homeowners that have been notified, have they fixed their leaks? And the other question I have is. Um, have we considered looking at putting water meters in, not just Matera, but around Gore as well? Um, through you, Mr Chair. Um, upon receiving the information from the contractor, I wrote letters to all the property owners that had the leaks. Um, to date, uh, four people have um, found the leaks and repaired them and been verified by us that, that 
they had stock. Uh, six property owners have asked for help and assistance in trying to locate the leaks. Um, water meters, to my knowledge, haven't been investigated due to the high um, capital outlay that would be required to in install them. Thank you, um, Jay. Jason. Um, just on the water meters too, it's possibly something that through uh, Three Waters Reform, um, I'd imagine that would be something on the radar for that as well. So. Just another comment from another water scheme was that some of the problem households, they install meters to them and then um, give them a number to work to. Mm. Could be an option in the future. No more questions? Um, Councillor Phillips. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I, I'd just like to congratulate the staff on uh, finding these leaks. Significant, significant piece of work that's probably going to save us a lot of money in the, in the long term and um, perhaps then it may be up to the government group to think about putting a bylaw in place that uh, the residents that don't abide by the, the leak systems that um, we give them a bit of a few nails to hammer in, if you understand. So um, then they've got uh, something to go by and if, if, the, if the resident weren't abide by the leaders and just continues on with the leak in, inside their property and I think um, we might need seriously have to think about that uh, if the reforms don't come within a very short space of time. Yes, thanks. Because yeah, I'm just um, thinking about the condition of Matera which is a lot better than the condition of some of the pipes in Gore and I'm just thinking about the continuation of the leak service within the Gore area as soon as possible, I think. Councillor Stringer. Uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, the leak that was losing 80 litres a minute and you weren't detecting on the surface, do we know where that's been going? Like, do we have a big underground Storm cabin room. now? <laughs> uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, so, when they dug it up, they didn't find a big cavity. It was um, just going to ground. Um, in the past, I've, I've seen some pretty significant leaks that just go to ground and you never see them. So, yep. Yeah, it's a good find, one of those. <laughs> Very good find. Yeah. Um, any, any further questions? Mayor Bell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is, is there any current incentives, Aaron, for people, you know, when we tell them that they have a leak, do they have a time period that they have to fix it in or, or any incentive whatsoever, or is it really up to the discretion of the homeowner to fix it out of the kindness of their heart? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the letter didn't give a time frame. It just asked them to reach out to me with um, once they had received the letter and if they wanted any um, help the council was there to assist and if the leak had been fixed, if they could notify so we can verify it. But at this stage I haven't put a, a firm deadline on when it has to be done but as time rolls on I'm keeping a spreadsheet of it and we'll be following up and putting more emphasis on it. Personal approach. Oops. Councillor McKenzie. Just what powers do council have if people do nothing? Can't turn it off. Can you turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> Just a point. Yeah. I'll grab that one if you like. Uh, through the chair. Um, so un under our water supply bylaw, um, there is provisions um, if, if, if the council believes there's um, excessive water wastage at the property, we can install a, a flow meter, measure that and, and charge them um, based on our um, standard fees and charges. Um, yeah, I, and then I guess there is a, another, another provision to restrict the water flow at the site. Um, if, if, again, if we, if we think that water, the excessive usage is occurring. Um, to be honest, I don't think in my time at the council we've ever got to that stage. Um, obviously, um, if there's a water leak on a property, it's potentially damaging that property, so there's a bit of that, that incentive for the property owner to get it fixed as well. 
Thank you, Matt. Um, Mayor Bell. I guess that begs the question, are, are any of these leaks in particular considered excessive or are they within kind of a regular leak amount? Um, through you, Mr Chair. Um, some of the private property ones, um, a couple of them were significant. Um, the rest of them are just general leaks. Um, following up from Matt speaking about um, leaks being under people's houses causing damage, I had a phone call from a plumber last week that said he got called to go and fix his toilet. When he went underneath the house, there's a big pool of water from the water leak that no one knew about. And it, he had just received the letter to say that he had a leak and he thought it was his toilet. So, yep. Any further questions? Councillor McPhail. The chair there. Um, so, let me get this right, there's no bylaw, because I know if you have a shrub above the fence line, we get a letter and you have to get it cut down and we, you get charged if you don't get it done. There must be something, is there not? The only thing is what Matt spelled out is putting a metre in. If okay. it's, or, so or that's, that's the only course of action, that's fine, because it's a yeah. cost through us so directly, isn't it? Three at a time, yeah. So, okay, thank you. Matt. Through the Chair, just to clarify, there, there is a water supply bylaw um, in place that, that covers that and, and spells it out, yeah. Thank you. Mayor Bell. Is there any ballpark for timeline as to when you think will be too long, or are you just seeing how how many get fixed over the next? You're just letting the letter sit and seeing how it goes for now and then, or have you got kind of ideas of when you might do a follow-up and a, a, a further, further letter? Through you, Mr Chair, um, my plan was by the end of the month I'd be doing a follow-up um, letter to the residents. Um, uh, bearing that in mind, I had a phone call last night from a gentleman that just received his. He lives in Australia, so um, he has only just received it yesterday. So he was calling a plumber this morning to get it resolved. But um, I think giving them a month to make contact or to have it fixed was a, a great timeline, so. Councillor um, Neville Phillips. Thanks, Mr Chair. Uh, uh, possibly that uh, it could be one to pass on to the, to the uh, policy and regulatory group for their decision to make uh, a decision about whether there's a time frame limited to put on the on the bylaw so that you guys have got a bit of, so when you put four weeks on the letter, four weeks is four weeks. And you know, then you don't have to have uh, a guess or putting the pressure on the manager. So if it was in, written in the bylaw, perhaps um, that might be a better policy. No, it's a good idea. We need to talk to Keith. <laughs> um, any other further questions? I, I guess just, sorry, I just just double checking with Matt. Would that would that be helpful to go down that route? Aaron as well. Through the chair. Um, yeah, I just I guess we've obviously got the three waters reform hovering over us, and um, I guess updating reviewing bylaws can often be. Um, you know, not a quick process. Uh, so I wonder if, if we wait until perhaps after the uh, elections and, and see where the three wars reform sits after that um, and, and perhaps then look at it um, at that stage. Yeah, thanks for that, Matt, and good call. I, I guess it won't go on this upcoming meeting anyway, so by the time we cycle back round to the next one, it will be close to election time regardless. So um, that committee can assess it then. Thanks, Matt. Councillor Phillips. Yeah, I think it just needs to be flagged with a, um, just make a side note that um, if nothing's going to happen within two to three years for reform, well, we need to have something in there. Jason can take note of that and we can follow that up. Yeah. Any further discussion? Someone would like to move that the report be received. Mayor Bell. Seconder, Stuart. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? It's carried. So just note that we will follow up, um, put an extension on, they have a time limit on um, people fixing their leaks. Some sort of method in the future. Project register for uh, Matt. Um, would you like to fill us in on this one? 
through the chair. Um, yeah, obviously this is just a, a summary of, of the various um, significant projects that we have underway currently. Um, there's more detailed um, project updates provided further along in the agenda. Um, so perhaps um, we move on to those unless anyone's got any specific questions about the, the register itself. It's a good quick look, yeah. Uh, we'll move on, if no questions on that one, we'll move on to the uh, Elizabeth Street Order of Service upgrade. Oops. We'll need to re re receive that report so first. Would someone like to move that? Yeah. Councillor Stringer and a seconder. Councillor Ben Bell. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Mayor Ben Bell, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All those against? <laughs> Passed. We'll move on to the um, first one is Elizabeth Street um, Water Service Upgrade. Thanks, Matt. Through the Chair. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I guess this, problem, uh, this project um, has, um, I suppose, been a little bit of a thorn on our side for the last few months. Um, we've, we've felt like We've been very close to, to finishing the main uh, reticulation in the street for a number of months now and, and still haven't quite got there. Um, although I guess it's pleasing to report that um, Fulton Hogan are very close to, to um, disestablishing from site, um, albeit uh, they are planning to return in spring um, to finish off some um, road construction work, um, berm reinstatement, and um, a small amount of drainage work um, that um, yeah, I guess we've, we've agreed um, is, is best to hold off until we've, we've got some better weather rather than uh, try and do it now. And, um, and the, the risk would be that it would take longer and we get a poorer quality finish um, trying to do it in, during winter. Um, yeah, and, and, but I guess um, just to adding to that, we've, we've made it quite clear to Fulton Hogan that um, the, the street needs to be reinstated to an acceptable level before they disestablish um, to, to minimise any disruption to residents um, in the interim. Um, and I guess the other thing I'll comment on is, is the private property separation work. Um, progress with that um, and using local plumbers is, is I guess, been... Um, reasonably slow over the last few months. Um, I guess we're hoping that um, the, the plumber's workload will start to ease up and, and they'll um, have some more resources available to get that work done. Um, and I guess we're just starting to have conversations with, with the plumbers that we are using around the fact that if they can't commit to um, some more steady progress, um, we're going to have to start looking at, at using um, some plumbers based in Invercargill or something like that. Um, to, to make sure that we get through that work. Happy to take any questions. Councillor Phillips. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Yeah, thanks, Matt, for that. Oh, um, excuse my back. Yeah, my, my, my concern was that um, this was the, the first time the council was undertaken the private separation, uh, and my concern was that December deadline there's a lot, few months out and there's a lot of cost between now and December um, coming back onto the right bar. And I'm pleased to hear that you have put the emphasis back onto the plumbers who are uh, designed onto this project uh, to get their A G and get it done because um, I presume that their procurement is in their own risk, is it? Not ours? Is that correct? Their, or the pipe work? Or have we purchased the pipe work? Through the chair, yeah, that's correct. The, the plumber is purchasing all the materials um, themselves. So they, they're, here lies my concern that by December, their price is probably going to triple or double. Um, uh, and they're not going to worry too much about coming there straight away as a priority job because they know that this job is going to last till December. They, and if I was a plumber, I'd be getting the um, other wee jobs done first because it's a known thing that I've got 
income coming in later on after I've finished these jobs. So, yeah, I'm glad that you're putting the pressure on them. Councillor Stringer. Uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, I see the driveway repairs have been removed from the project, but the cost is being shared for it. Through the chair, yeah, so sorry, just what I mean by that is uh, the driveway repairs have been removed from the Fulton Hogan contract, um, but this project will still fund a portion of those driveway restatements and the roading department will fund the other portion where we're replacing sections that haven't actually been affected by this work. Councillor Stringer. Yeah, just a, another question. It's not so much about the report there, but um, the basin that you've got at the end of the street, obviously for taking um, flood events, um, what is the risk for people ending up in that um, when it's semi-full or full? Through the chair, yeah. We're, we're, this is something that we've, we've discussed um, in length. Um, and... Um, there's not a lot of industry guidance, or, the, or I guess there's a lot of um, confusion in the industry around this. Um, stormwater basins are, are reasonably common um, in other parts of town and uh, other parts of the country, um, and I'm not aware of many, if any, that are fenced. Um, I know um, the Auckland um, design standards say that Fencing's not normally required. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, um, you know, if, if you look at, at that site and, and most sites, um, the, the risk of, of the road traffic that's on the other side of the footpath um, is, is significantly higher than the, the basin that's, you know, full um, on a relatively infrequent um, cycle, um, yeah. So, so at this stage, we've, we've deemed the risk not requiring um, fencing, um, but yeah, we can review that at any stage. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, Jason will comment on this. You just uh, through the chair further to Matt's comments. So this is um, certainly an item that's on our sort of health and safety risk. Um, agenda, if it were. Um, we've been looking at um, that basin and also the one at Matoi Ridge um, and just um, at this stage that's our approach but certainly um, during, we'll be monitoring those closely during any so significant rain events just to see how they are functioning, see what sort of uh, water um, is pooling and then that will give us a better indication of um, what that risk or perceived risk is and we can then address it but we haven't ruled out fencing, but at this stage we're sort of looking at um, all the information that's purpose because yeah, we sort of we want to make sure that there is some green space here that can be utilised as well um, as part of these and so we want to um, make it usable and add to the aesthetics too of, of the um, streetscapes if we can um, and um, sort of, but if we deem it the risk to get um, higher then we will um, look at fencing as an option. Any further questions? Mayor Ben Bell. Well, I, I guess that once again begs the question of if we end up in the, the situation that we've been in at the start of the year um, with WorkSafe becoming involved, what is our liability there if we do have a terrible, terrible event happen again? Um, will it be the same scenario or, yeah, I guess, what, what risk do we have there? Who would like to comment on that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Through you, Mr Chair, I guess the, what we should do is take some advice from the industry, because what WorkSafe normally do is comment on, on any industry standard that there may be out there in terms of recommendations for um, say, for example, fencing a, a water body. The, the issue you have here, of course, is that predominantly it'll be dry, uh, but in a flood event, 
it will be um, have water which uh, could prove to be a hazard. So what I would recommend we do is actually find out, talk to WorkSafe and in any um, industry standard we know out there, so that we can be assured that we are um, taking all due um, care to eliminate a risk but to talk to the point of Jason that we don't want to detract from the aesthetics of the area and it's actually a green space which is quite attractive and probably 95% of the time is probably going to be just a, um, a wee bowl with um, some green grass for people to generally enjoy in that neighbourhood. So if, if that's of the wish of the committee, we can take some advice and report back about what that advice might be. Thank you. Can you take note of that, Jason? Yeah. Any further questions? If not, I'll put the um, let the report be received. Would someone like to move that? Stuart. A seconder, Councillor Stringer. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? It's carried. We'll move over to the next report. Is the East Gore Water Treatment Plant Upgrade uh, Project Update? Um, for Matt again. Through the Chair. Um, yeah, so uh, this project is, is largely complete um, with one, I guess, outstanding issue being a, um, one piece of equipment at the site creating a, a noise issue for the um, immediate neighbours. Um, and so we met with the contractor last week um, and he outlined uh, their plans to resolve the issue um, both to us and, and the affected residents um, and they're just waiting on some final pieces of information before they commit to um, the work that they'll be doing in, in a time frame um, so we'd like to have that commitment I'd expect in the next week or two um, I suspect the, the, all the work will take um, three or four months to complete um, but yeah, um, I think we're happy and the, and the affected resident um, seems to be happy with the, with the progress and, the, and what's being proposed at this point. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. And Councillor Phillips. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, just a question to Matt then. Is this a design fault, uh, just an unseen fault? Is it air cost or is it the completion of the installation installator through the chair I guess the, the first thing to note is uh, that the contract that the council awarded was a, a design build contract to the the contractor um, so while it is a design issue it's um, the contractor's problem to resolve it, um, it and it is a cost to the contractor rather than to the council thank you any further questions? We will wait what happens, I suppose. Yeah. Um, would someone like to move that this report be received? Thank you, Neville. Councillor Neville Phillips. And a seconder? Councillor Stringer. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? It's carried. Uh, the Wigham Street. Wastewater mains replacement update. It's right in our eyes at the moment. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Through the chair, uh, yes, probably the, the biggest. Um, oh, first, I note that uh, the, the construction on site is going reasonably well. Um, it's obviously a reasonably complicated project in terms of uh, particularly the location that they're working with and, and the significance of the pipe that they're working on. Um, but we're pretty happy with the performance of the contractor to date. Um, since writing this report, we have managed to um, obtain the necessary permit from Kiwi Rail, um, allowing us to complete the works through the rail corridor. Um, so that's uh, progressing as we speak. Um, and there's a, what they call a block of line, um, which means a period where they're going to shut the railway tracks down so that we can do the, the work actually underneath the railway tracks. Um, so that's occurring this weekend, um, so the contractor's busy getting ready for that. Um, there's a certain amount of pipe that he needs to install before he can do the section under the railway tracks. Um, 
and I guess that um, you, you've possibly noticed that they've done halfway across the, the state highway and then stopped and that, that's all around this key rail permit issue. Um, they had about a week um, where we didn't have the permit um, and the only work that we could progress was across the state highway. Um, so rather than um, sit around and do nothing for a week, they did that and then have returned back to do the, the section through the Kiwi Rail land. Uh, so I'd expect um, it to be probably about, about two weeks um, um, for them to finish off the, the section through the Kiwi Rail land before they then get back out onto the state highway and, and finish off going across the state highway and, th and through the playground um, to complete the project. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? Councillor Stringer. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, thanks for that. You've answered my, my first question, which was going to be regarding the permit. Um, the other one then is, um, so going th under or through the, the rail corridor, are they actually needing to remove track to do it, or are they thrusting, or are they bursting? Um, and what is our risk, or what's, what is the risk if they don't get it done in that allocated time. Do we have to then reapply for another permit? Um, is any loss upon the contract or is that fall back on us? Through the chair. Um, yes, yeah, so um, I guess the first thing is uh, they've got three days allowed for the block of line and um, we're reasonably comfortable um, with that time frame. Um, we're working pretty closely with Kiwi Rail and, and Kiwi Rail's contractor, so um, they will be lifting up the track, the Kiwi Rail contractor will be lifting up the tracks um, and, and then putting them back um, and, and, and we'll do the work obviously in between that. Um, yeah, and. And so, yeah, I guess the, the biggest risk um, is, is probably around the weather. Um, we can't replace the pipe um, during rain event because it, uh, the, the flow, flows are too big. Uh, fortunately, the weather forecast is looking reasonably fine for the, the upcoming weekend, uh, touch wood. Um, and, yeah, there is another block of line, I think it's, is it late June? 24th. Yeah, 24th of June. That if we if we did um, miss this one, we could we could work towards that one. Um, but obviously, at the end of the the block line that's coming up, we have to have the railway tracks back in place and, and operational. Yeah. Any further questions, uh, Councillor Phillips? Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, it's not so much a question, but it just uh, the delay actually helped. I think with the time delay, it was. Uh, well timed considering what's just happened in the last 10 days and I think you can imagine what the consequences might have been if that road had been shut off in, in the last 10 days and it's been really good I think. Good timing. Yes. I think it would be good, um, be good to see that project finished under the railway and it'd be, it looks major. The other question I had was what's the difference in size between the new pipe and the old pipe? Through the chair. Um, so it's essentially the pipe's going to have the same capacity, um, but the, the existing pipe is an egg-shaped uh, pipe that's sort of approximately one metre high um, and about 500 millimetres wide. Um, and so we're changing that out with a, a standard um, 900 diameter circular pipe. Um, so yeah, essentially the same capacity. Um, but um, but different shape. Thank you. Any further questions? I would like to put this report that the report would be received. Um, would someone like to move that? Councillor Stewart. Victor now. Seconder, Councillor Mr. Stringer. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? It's carried. Oh, Sorry, no. Mr. Chair, I just need to be excused. Thank you Thank very you. much. The partial desludging of the Gore Oxidation Ponds project update from Matt again. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, look, I'll, I'll just comment that this project is going very well. Um, I think we're very happy with the performance of the contractor on it. Um, and, yeah, happy to take any questions. Any questions for this one? Councillor Phillips. No, it's not, not so much a question, but just once again, uh, congratulations for finally getting some, some result after this length of period of time that we've been in and out of oxidation ponds, and yeah, thanks, thanks to the staff. I, I'd agree, I'd agree with that, especially after our last go. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor McDonnell, did you want a question? It's not a question, just a statement. I'm, I think it must be going quite well because I've had no one call me about it, so it's, it's all. Thank you. No, no further questions. I'd like to put the re report be received. Um, will they, uh, someone like to move that report? Councillor McKenzie moved that one, and Councillor Phillips seconded it. <laughs> Thank you. All, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried. We'll switch over to the Gore and Matera Wastewater Consent Renewal Project Update. Thank you, Matt. Mm. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, so again, this, this project's going reasonably well. Um, although um, we are, in terms of time frame, um, so we originally agreed to have a resource consent application through to Environment Southland um, in about April next year. Um, and just, I guess, that time frame is starting to get a little bit tighter. Uh, the te technical working group um, seems to be working pretty well. and. Um, particularly when we, we get in, in a meeting together, we, we seem to be able to reach a, con, a consensus and um, agreement on things, so that's, that's really pleasing. Um, one thing I will flag to you is that we're hoping, um, we're, just, we're just pencilling in um, a governance group hui. Um, so we're aiming for Friday the 21st of July at 1pm. Um, and the idea behind that is that will be a joint um, hui between uh, the elected council members and uh, the Hokanui Runanga leadership team. Um, and at that meeting, uh, we'll be going over the investigation work that's been completed um, with um, the aim of identifying a short list of options uh, for more detailed investigation, um, which will then obviously would expect a preferred option to fall out. Um, and as part of that, we will also be asking for some feedback on um, criteria as to what those shortlisted options, um, how, how they'll be ranked um, or, or how, how they'll be selected. Um, but you'll yeah, be hoping for a, a good attendance there, um, if, if possible. Thank you. Is there any questions? Councillor McPhail, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks for that through the chair, Matt. Um, Matt um, do we are we going to get some info on? Sorry, are we going to get some info on that before we go to that, so that we're sort of heads up? This, this, you're talking about the cultural concerns of what the discharges is. That what you're talking about? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so um, we'll get something before we go. Perhaps. Through the chair, yeah, we we could have a think about that. Um, so the the hui will will be a workshop, so we won't. Um, I, I guess um, we wouldn't be looking for you to make any decisions, um, and yeah, it'd be whether um, whether we want to present that information and then provide you with the reports. Just or we potentially can provide the reports prior to the workshop, but it may be a bit confusing. So um, yeah, we can have a think about that. Um, sounding like your, your preference would be to get some material beforehand. Just so we have a bit of a heads up about what possibly could be put in front of us. So sure, we, yep. We, we we're not sitting there um, looking blank. No, we thank, can, thank you. We can look at that. No, it's good to hear there is some agreement and that you are moving forward. Any further questions? Councillor Phillips. Uh, is it possible to get that on the calendar, Mr Chair? Mm. It's uh, just been added. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, not quite yet. Will we'll be. Thank you. 
Uh, any other questions? Councillor Stringer. Oh, no. Are <laughs> <laughs> you moving that report? <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Councillor Stringer. And uh, is there a seconder? Councillor McKenzie, thank you. Change of practice. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? And it's carried. We'll move over to the uh, Matera River crossing, the project update on that. Quite, um, quite a major project. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, yes, yeah, so obviously um, the Council recently made a decision to focus on uh, drilling a pipe underneath the river as opposed to the um, proposed shared use bridge. Um, and following on from that, um, we've now engaged Becker to do a geotech investigation. Uh, we've had input from um, a directional driller around uh, the recommended investigation work to be completed. Um, and we will shortly be issuing out a um, expression of interest uh, for the for the drilling component of the work um, and that, that's around getting an understanding as to the um, capacity and capability of, of the uh, contracting market to complete that work um, and then the, once we've got an understanding of that that'll I guess guide our um, procurement plan um, it is obviously reasonably specialist uh, work um, and there will be a limited number of uh, contractors that are capable of doing it. Um, I guess in that expression of interest, we have, while it, you know, the, the preference is, is for directional drilling, we have left it a little bit open so that if there is a contractor out there that thinks um, they can do it cost effectively and, and efficiently via another method, um, i.e. trenching, um, we've left it open at this stage. Um, but yeah, our thoughts are that the most likely outcome is that it'll be drilled. Um, Councillor McKenzie, question. It's just a comment, really. Uh, he's still getting a bit of communication from Jack Mack. He's Sorry. very, he's very keen, keen on digging a ditch across the river. He, <laughs> he just likes to know that he's being heard. That's all. Through the chair, I, I don't think we've heard anything since the community engagement um, closed. Um, He's been in for a chat with me, I can tell you. <laughs> Is it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I know there's a lot of discussion out in the community about uh, trenching through the river. Yeah. Um, my nervousness is, is really around, um, I, I can't find any examples of, of a similar um, scale of work being completed. Um, and, and so if people are aware of, of um, you know, projects where a pipeline's been trenched through a river um, in New Zealand of, of that scale, um, I'd, I'd be quite keen to hear about it. It's, it's not totally off the books, it's probably what people would like to hear. Well, that's, uh, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, thank you. I presume, I presume trenching would trigger a consent though, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, that is another significant challenge um, that, that would need to be overcome if you're going to go down that path. Yeah. Councillor Stringer. Uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, the expressions of interest, that'll go up on the Government Gets system? Cool. That's correct. Thank you. Just a question, how many people do you propose would take up trenching, uh, drilling? You, on contracted wise through the chair that I mean there's certainly one that we know that's that's capable of doing it um, potentially another one or two um, but yeah I'd, I'd be surprised if we got more than more than three um, yeah thank you no more questions Would someone like to move uh, council McFarl uh, through the chair, just sorry, just a view on that. We've gone through the process with the public, and we've explained that we were looking at going under the river. Now we've got to be very careful that we, if we look at the trenching side of things, that we don't go down this path, another that path, without talking to the people because 
this has happened before and we don't want that to happen again. I don't personally don't want that to happen again. Just want to make a point of that. That's all, just to think very carefully. Thank you. Any comment on that, Matt? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean um, that, that would obviously um, all come back through the council if we we're going to go through that path. And I don't... Uh, yeah... Uh, uh, yeah, it would, it would be entirely up to the council um, as to whether they want to go down that path um, and would obviously need to talk to Hokanui Runanga and things like that. Um, I think the, the key thing around the... the decision that the council made was that they were moving away from the bridge and, and focusing on a pipeline across the bridge, uh, river. Um, yeah. Thank you. No further questions? Are you moving that council file? That report will be received. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councilman McDonnell. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? It's carried. Haven't heard anything from David, are you still there? <laughs> Matera water treatment plant upgrade. Um, Matt, thanks. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, yeah, again, this, this project's um, tracking along fairly nicely. Um, contractors seem to be performing quite well. Um, there have been sort of a, a number of minor variations and, and design changes and things uh, required, um, but that's perhaps not unexpected given that it's um, you know, the, the upgrade and, and refurbishment of an existing treatment plant. Um, some of the things we, I guess, were aware of but couldn't quantify until um, some of the demolition works was completed or, or um, filters were taken out of service and things like that. Um, yeah, and I guess at this stage, yeah, we're on track um, to have things completed sort of late this year. Um, we're nearing um, quite a critical stage where uh, the new electrical equipment will be installed and the first filter um, will be um, brought into service. Um, so I'd expect that to happen over the next month. Um, and from there, they'll, that'll then allow them to take the second filter out of service and, and start the refurbishment work on that. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? Looks like a good report and a good contractor. Yeah. Would someone like to move that this report be received? Councillor Stringer. Mr Secretary Council Phillips. Thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. Uh, the last, uh, next one is the Hillbury Avenue Water Tower Demolition Project. Through the Chair, um, yeah again, so this project's changed somewhat um, following the decision to hold off on the demolition of the tower itself um, and consider that as part of the uh, 2024 long-term plan. Uh, but we are still Progressing with uh, the construction of a new pump station. Um, so, preparation work for that's been completed on site, um, and um, we're just working through the building consent process um, and working through some uh, requests for information that's come out of that. Um, but we expect to, to have that consent sooner rather than later, allowing the, the construction of the actual pump station to get underway. Any, any questions? Looks reasonably straightforward. Um, most projects are these days, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Would someone like to move that that report be received? Thanks, Councillor McDonnell. And any a seconder? Councillor Phillips. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. That brings us to the end of our open meeting. Um, we'll have a short break, but